Hey guys, Fear here from Temple Storm, and welcome to another video guide. This video guide will be talking about Anubarak, the Trader King. So in this video guide, we'll be talking about what Anubarak can do with his pros and cons. We'll talk about his talent builds, and then we'll go over a few replays. So stick around and get ready to learn how to be a beetle. Now we're going to talk about Anubarak's pros and cons. And starting off with his pros, I'd say it's nice having stuns as a warrior, especially when you're the main tank. So Anubarak having his Impale and Burrow charge being stuns is definitely beneficial for being a warrior and like beneficial in team fights. So that's always the best CC you can ask for as a warrior. So that's definitely really nice to have on, the, on this guy. Uh, next, I would say his next... Uh, pro would be having high magic resistance so he's got a lot of magic armor so he's good against Li Ming, Kael'thas, Chromie, uh, a little bit of Vala she's a little bit of magic damage but she's mixed so it's nice having you know some magic armor just built straight in and I'd say his last uh, pro is just how far he, he has with his engage range and what his tools are so once you get level 10, you get Cocoon, and having that on such a 60 second cooldown is really short for a very powerful tool in a team fight. So having that, including his Burrow Charge, like making him be able to have an insane engage range would be like really nice to have on almost any warrior. So Nubrek has a lot of tools you can deal with that will just you know benefit you in a team fight and like giving you a better chance to win you know video games with those type of tools so definitely the strongest warrior right now in this patch and yeah i don't know what else for pros but for cons i what i have noticed is once you engage with your burrow charge you're pretty much you're if you don't get a kill with whoever you're going on with your burrow charge a new brick has one of the lowest hp uh pools for all the warriors so once you burrow in, you're basically going to make yourself a big target to everyone. So if you burrow in and you don't get a kill, that that means people are going to just turn and start uh, attacking you. And with a new Brack being pretty squishy uh, with his health, health pool, it makes him a very big target. So that's definitely a con that you want to be careful with. For those who may not know, let's quickly go over a new uh, basic abilities and his two heroic abilities. So Nubrak's passive is Scarab Host, so whenever you use abilities, you spawn a beetle, which will last for 8 seconds and it'll attack nearby enemies. So generally with, with this trait, you wanna the best thing about it is pushing buildings down and having them tank for you. So once you stun or use any abilities, you know, use all your abilities, then you get three beetles, and you get a beetle for each ability you use. So you know they're a little annoying and they're good for pushing buildings and stuff like that so it's not a bad trait to have as a warrior you know just good for sieging so his Q is impale which uh, you throw it in a line you see here and once you once you throw it it stuns anyone knocked up for one second so here we go so see knocked up for one second so pretty good to have you know you can never complain as a warrior when you have CC, like mainly a stun. So that one's pretty good. His W, Hardened Carapace, just grants him a shield uh, for three seconds. So just press W, you gain a shield. Nothing too special. It's just nice to have extra sustain, and also it's good to spam this ability for spawning beetles to tank for you. His E is Burrow Charge, which is by far his strongest ability, and one of the most broken abilities in this game in my opinion so you have a pretty large engage range and once you burrow you travel until you either reach the max distance or you press the E ability again and you'll cancel it early but once you reach your target you knock them up for 2.5 seconds I don't know excuse me you knock them up for very briefly and they're slowed for 25% for 2.5 seconds so what you want to do is you just E you knock them up and then they are also slowed so pretty good ability uh, once you get his talents with 
mainly epicenter at level 16 you can get multiple people pretty easily in a team fight with burrow charge so it's definitely a really good engage tool to have and it's a lot of disruption now both of his heroic abilities you got locust swarm here and cocoon locust swarm uh you're just never i recommend probably never using it maybe very rarely in like hero league but or quick match but in hec you will, probably won't see much locust swarm so it's a hundred second cooldown then you just spawn uh small beetles that do damage around you and they heal you for uh, small amounts of damage so it's been nerfed a lot it used to be like really good but i think it's just been nerfed too much to the point where i think cocoon's definitely the better ult so now we have cocoon which you'll see almost every player be using 60 second cooldown you put uh your target in a cocoon for eight seconds and the cocoon targets allowed to be broken out by the enemy heroes if they're auto attacking it or hitting it with spells so like tassadar uh psionic storm or whatever the w will break out the cocoon pretty fast so you see here you throw the cocoon and here's the timer you know they're stuck in here for eight seconds until their teammate breaks it out or it expires so it's a really good tool to have mainly you're going to be using this against like the enemy support players because what you want to do is you want to engage with your burrow charge on your main target quickly use your cocoon on the support and then just use your impale on the your main target again who you want to be focusing so really strong kit in my opinion probably yeah definitely i'll say this a lot the strongest warrior in this game currently in the malthio patch so I think his base kit's really strong. He gets even stronger with his uh, talents. So, yeah, I really like his kit as a warrior. Now that we know Nubarak's pros and cons, let's start talking about his talent builds. So, uh, what I'm gonna show you is the talent build. Talent build I go almost every HEC game. I get to play on a Nubarak and in scrim. So, let's get to it. So, level one here. It's usually. This is like mainly your two choices is going to be Nerubian armor, which get, grants you 30 spell armor uh, every 12 seconds. So basically like a spell block every 12 seconds. And yeah, that's always good against Li Ming, Kael'thas, like any type of comps that are going to be poking you a lot with uh, heavy spell damage. So usually you go that almost every game. You're probably going to go Nerubian Nerubi army armor. God, I can't speak. Uh, the other, only other choice would be Regeneration Master, and this would be picked on maps like Tomb of the Spider Queen or Dragonshire. Just maps that you can easily rotate and get uh, health globes and stack this up pretty quick. But generally, if they have a ton of spell damage, you always want to go Nerubian Armor over Regen Master. So we're going to take Nerubian Armor. Talent. Now in this, you'll see a lot of people pick between Bed of Barbs and Underking. Uh, a lot of people like Bed of Barbs because it's good against a bunch of melee, you know, you and you can leave it on the ground and it'll stall capping points. Like, so if someone's trying to cap a tribute or something, you can throw this down and they can't uh, cap because this will be damaging them on the ground for a few seconds. But... Generally, I've been playing around with Underking a lot, and I think I prefer Underking as my choice. Mainly because the Burrow Charge range is really nice. Having extra range is, like, you can engage off the screen and people will, like, have a harder time reacting once, you know, they see you Burrow Charging from far away. And also increases the damage by 100%, so, you know, you can't complain about getting more damage, so it's a pretty nice bonus, so... With this guide, we're going to be going under king. Choose a talent. Now, there's two choices. It is uh, this E shield. Once you burrow charge, after you, you end it, you get a strong uh, HP shield so, for five seconds. So usually you want to go with this. Uh, the only time I would go this W1 at 7 is if they have a lot of random poke, like... Mainly, this is really good against Lunara because it's going to be proccing. If she auto attacks you once with her poison, it's going to be proccing uh, this this talent a lot. So, 
That's the only really time I'd, I'd go this W is if they have a lot of poke. That's going to be continuously poking you down. But generally, I like the E shield at 7, so we're going to go with this. Choose a talent. Now here is a debate we had a lot a while ago, even before Locust Swarm was nerfed. Or, not nerfed. I think this ability has gotten nerfed like... Like three, three times max. I, I'm pretty sure it's been nerfed like three, maybe four times. Like, mainly just the damage numbers getting nerfed, and... Yeah, I've... I used to like Locust Swarm, but after, like, the second nerf, I was like, why people not trying Web Blast or Cocoon? And it's also a lower cooldown, so having a lower cooldown on a Heroic is generally the... the better pick. So... With this build, we're gonna go Cocoon. Having a 60 second... Like, CC... I don't even know what to call it. It's I guess it is a CC because they're trapped, but you can also break uh, your allies out of it. So, Choose a talent. If it, can I cocoon a dummy? Oh yeah. So I see here, they're stuck here for 8 seconds. You can see the bar timing down. But the thing with cocoon is if it takes any damage, so like and people can auto it down and it'll break them out faster. So you're going to almost always nowadays see cocoon and not like... Rarely you'll ever see Locust Swarm unless Cocoon just gets absolutely no value, which in almost every game you will always get value off Cocoon. So, definitely a really strong heroic. Uh, I think it's too short of a cooldown. I think it needs to get nerfed just a bit because I think it's way too powerful right now. But, anyways, yeah, for this, Cocoon. Now, level 13, uh, all three of these choices are really good, in my opinion. This is probably one of his strongest tiers because you got multiple options you can go towards. Uh, let's talk about this one first. The Acid Drench Mandibles. So it's basically like if you ever play Muradin, the give him the axe. Once you auto attack someone who's been recently stunned or CC'd, like, you just do like a critical hit on them, which doing bonus damage. So having that on a tank is pretty strong because you do a buttload of damage. So... Getting on a squishy with stuns and, and all that, which Anubrak has built in stuns with his impale and his burrow charge. Having this option to just go on the back line and start auto attacking them with stuns and all your stuff, like it's really strong in my opinion. Especially since it's a 70% increased damage and I think Muradin's is like, yeah, it's definitely not as high as this one. So I think this is my, fa my personal favorite talent most of the time as long as they don't have heroes who have block charges or genji would dodge so that's the only time i usually don't get it uh with this w at level 13 it pairs really well with that seven we were talking about so it reduces this one reduces the cooldown of your w so you get it back faster so with that you can also be spamming this so when you pick this 13 town you'll do a small aoe around yourself and It'll do damage and it'll do double damage to heroes. So it's pretty nice to have if you're getting constantly poked down, mainly against Lunara, it's really good against. And then Burning Rage, you know, if you can't really auto attack and if you didn't go the W at 7, then there's no harm going Burning Rage. So all these tal talents are really good. It's very situational. If you can get on the back line a lot and like just do a bunch of damage with your Burrow Charge and then auto attack and then impale then auto attack i would always go this so with this bill guide we're gonna go the mandibles choose a talent so what makes me sad is when when you think of heroes with level 16 talents you generally have a hard choice between like one and two talents but Anubrax a weird one because I feel like Epicenter has always been the dominant one in, on level 16. And it's been nerfed a little bit, but I think it still is the choice. Uh, I don't think I, I think I tried this this one in a scrim before, but just not having the impact radius for Burrow Charge and the cooldown reduction just kind of hurts a bit in later of the fights. With this, it's good against, yeah, like, Gleaming, Kel'Thas, like, uh, maybe Vala, because she's mixed with spell damage and autos, but generally I like Epicenter, and yeah, all the Beetle talents suck, so I don't know why they're trying to make Beetle build a thing, but I think 
before his rework, Beetle Build was actually not too bad. But now it's just, I don't think it exists. But yeah, on this tier, definitely 100% epicenter. Mainly because of the cooldown reduction and the impact area. So it's a lot easier to get like, you know, a four, five man uh, burrow charge when once you burrow in, it has a bigger area to knock up people. So yeah, we're going to go with epicenter here. Choose a talent. Now 20, uh, they, they changed his hardened shield to no, this one called nullification shield, which it's basically a, it's less than hardened shield, but it only gives spell armor for five seconds, which I mean, I don't really ever take it cause yeah, it's just spell armor. If it was armor and spell armor, then I think I would consider it depending what type of comp the enemy team has, but yeah, almost always, yeah, pretty much every game, you're going to see me go Rewind, because Rewind is just an insane tool. So usually, you know, in a fight, you're going to just want to E in, Q, Q in again, auto, and then E in. So yeah, that's basically the, how the combo you want to do is when, when you're team fighting, with, uh, once you get Rewind. So definitely a strong tool. So Rewind on tanks is pretty insane if you have CC, just like mainly knock up and stuns, what, which is what a noob has. So, generally, yeah, that's the talent build I like to go here. There's not very much else to pick on the noobrax talents. So I feel like some of these weird talents, like, like this beetle at level one, like, I, I think that's just weird. Um, this moving speed's not really that useful, like the beetle, whatever. And then this beetle one too, like I don't really understand, but almost always the build that I'm running here, you'll probably see a lot of warrior players in HEC using this build. Uh, there's a few changes, like 13 and 7 are the big ones that you'll probably see differently. So. Yeah, definitely check out this build. I think it's probably the strongest build. So definitely let me know what you guys think about it. All right, in this first clip, I'm gonna show you how strong a Nubrak can be with starting a fight with his long range engages with his burrow and then how strong his web blast can be. So here in the, what we have here before I play the clip, we have the enemy team pushing bot lane here. And you, if you look at the mini map, we're still middle so what our plan is is we want to come bottom and you know have get a fight and flank them while they're pushed up really far. So in the in the mini map it shows we're pretty far, but we make the call that we're all gonna come bot and gank that. So let's roll this clip and I'll show you uh, step by step like what what my thoughts are during a, a fight when I'm playing a new barack. So here you know the enemies they're just pushing and then you could see look in the mini map, we start collapsing over there like I. I'm already running right past Tassadar. So right before we, I engage on these three down here, you can see me up here. I'm right next to Tassadar. I have Web Blast available or Cocoon, whichever you like to call it. So before I engage, I, I look like, oh, Tass is behind me. All right, I'm going to put him in Web Blast. That's eight seconds. If no one is hitting that, he is stuck in there. So he cannot help his team at all. So the second I Web Blast, I call my target. It was either Ari or Vala, whichever one I can get with this Burrow Charge. Uh, I end up missing. He sidestepped pretty well bottom, but he's still in a pretty bad spot. So I burrow charge, but I got my uh, impale off, so that knocked him up. So he was the main target. Uther stuns with gravity laughs from KT. Gray main damage, and then just there you go. That's that's basically how you want to build a comp with a Nubrak is just everyone going on one target using cocoon on someone who can like save the, your, your teammates so you usually you want to cocoon the enemy team and you want to cocoon the support from the enemy team and then you just yell a target and you hope that your team follows up on that so while all that was happening we got that kill Tastar just now broke out of the cocoon and yeah that's already the, the fight's over so that's one clip of showing like just how strong like a Nubrak can just engage and disrupt the enemy team from what they want to do. In this last clip, I'm going to show you why I think Anubrak is by far the strongest warrior in the current patch, and that is still the Malthiel patch. And 
in this clip I'm about to show you we have a very good engage and we generally we have a pretty good idea where they're where the enemy team is so you're gonna see our Chen player walk into the brush that they're hiding in right now while we have our damage dealers on the side about to flank that area because we know that they're generally around this area so I'll show you like just how strong Anubrax uh, burrow charges with his level 4 and his level 16 with epicenter while also using cocoon on the right target and just showing how devastating it can be in a team fight so we're gonna roll this video so here we have, you know, Chen, he told uh, his support that he was going to go face check because we know that they're probably around this area. So they all engage on Chen. You know, he gets stunned. So Uther gets the Guardian a Ancient Kings proc on him. So he gets 75 armor. So he's basically just not going to die. So once I see as a new rag that they have all committed on Chen, that that is my cue. And that's also for our damages queue. They're flanking from up here. And you see me here uh, burrowing in. And look at how clumped they are. That's the easiest four-man burrow charge ever. So as I'm burrow charging, I land it, stun everyone. I put Ario instantly. Or I throw an impale, then put Ario instantly in the in the web blast. And we just pick a target. Right here it was Vala. She was just alone. And yeah, it just becomes like havoc. So Ario's in Wide Blast, we put focus down the squishy target, we get Vala, and then it's basically just a cleanup from here. After Ario's finally broken out of the Web Blast, she's our next target. You know, she uses Agent on herself, but yeah, it's it's basically over from there. So with with the tools that you have on a Nubrak, you can definitely snowball a team fight. So once you basically get a really good engage with your burrow charge and if you see your support target usually with your cocoon you're going to want to use it on a support so here is a replay again you want to use the cocoon almost always on the support while you focus down a squishy target like we did there with vala and then after the cocoon is over generally if if you're winning the team fight already you want to start focusing down whoever comes out of the the cocoon so, yeah, I think that's a pretty good demonstration of just how snowbally a noobrack can be in a team fight. So, basically, as a noob, you want to just look for those type of engages. And but the the downside is if you don't get those kills that you need once you burrow charge in, you're definitely a big target for the enemy team to start focusing down. This concludes my guide on a noobrack. Thank you all for watching and thanks for all the support. Be sure to follow me on twitter.com slash furyhots. Follow me, my team at TempoStorm, and be sure to subscribe here at the YouTube channel to see any more guides from me. And yeah, stay tuned for more Warrior Guys as we go down the list of all the tanks that I play. So thanks again for all the support, and I will catch you later. See ya!